over the last year or so, we've had some amazing doctors in the kitchen showing us what they cook at home to be healthy. But today I have something extra, extra special for you. What I would say, it is the, the Mount Everest of cooking challenges. Imagine that you are an Italian chef that for many, many years, several decades, you've, you've run cooking schools, you've run your own uh, restaurants, you're famous, you've been awarded things by the Italian government to find out that you've got diabetes and you need to cut out that lovely pasta and all those carbohydrates, what you do about it. But the very man himself I didn't meet first, I met his wife first, Katie, and I met Katie at Real Rude Food Rocks where I was doing a little cooking class in front of an audience. Katie came on afterwards and I was blown away at her ability in the kitchen. She then gave me this incredible book and I took it home, this is three or four months ago, and I've cooked nearly every single recipe in here. It is a life-changing book. I'd like to introduce you to a husband and wife team, the Caldeses, who are absolutely phenomenal, and they're gonna change the way you think about eating carbohydrates. Giancarlo, Katie, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Wow, this is going to be fun. Yeah. I'm going to, for once, just sit and say nothing and just let you get on with it and uh, <laughs> tell everybody your story. And, 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 and you know, as we've talked about before, my dad's diabetic type too. Okay. I'm struggling to make him change his ways. Um, so hopefully you're going to help me give my dad some extra years at the back end and, uh, and everybody else as well. And what are we going to make in the kitchen today? What are we going to concentrate on? Right, we're going to make pizza, but not as you know it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Brilliant. The, the interesting thing about this pizza is that <clears throat> when you're used to a pizza, you, you know you know what you're talking about. I remember many years ago, before I was diagnosed, that, that we, or before I knew that I was diabetic, we went to Rome, okay, we were writing the Rome book. So we sat next to a table and three pizza came out. And at that time, I knew that uh, I couldn't eat pizza. But just at that time, I, got, I, I couldn't eat any more carbs or pizza. And the pizza came out. And the smell of the pizza was so intense oh. that I had to get up from the table. Do you remember? I had to get up from the table, go for a little walk, and come back. And I was really, honestly, it's so interesting. Is all a mindset. Mm. My brain was scr scrambled. I've not seen a beautiful blonde, you know, but don't tell the wife. But, you know, <laughs> seriously. And it, I mean, really, it was totally scrambled. And I had to get up. I thought in my entire life I never would do certain things like it's happened since then that you don't think. But seriously, um, do you like to save your life or do yeah. you like to be dead first? Yeah. And the survival, mm -hmm. primal survival mm. is the key of our lives. So I decided, no, I'm sorry, I'm going to change. And, and prior to you finding you were diabetic, you were on so many BBC programmes. You had the one where they followed you both in, in Italy. You were on uh, MasterChef. Yeah. You, you've been on... Sunday yeah. Brown, all the rest there. Yeah, I mean, you've been on virtually every cooking programme yes. in the UK, mm -hmm. teaching people how to cook, the pastas. Yeah, and but, uh, uh, you know, yeah. the, the, thing, the, the thing is this, is uh, forget about the TV programme, but when you go two, three restaurants that we had at one stage, now we got two before we had three. Uh, one disappears in the building, they had to put the building down. Uh, but what's happening is that uh, you go in and you say to the chef, right, what's this, right, what's this? And, you, and you, you're grazing all the time and say, too, not too much salt, this is not good. So you basically, uh, what you do essentially, you, you drive in your kitchen to the food that you want to see mm -hmm. and, the, the, and the flavors that you have in your head, you know, sure. the things that you want to recreate from Tuscany. And mm. you, you as well, do you remember I used to go to Tuscany to find out how the food was and come back, mm, this is not quite the same. So Yeah, we, we always wanted to create authentic Italian food. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, no, so no. it's not quite an authentic Italian pizza, but it's just as good. Yeah. Well, your book is absolutely brilliant and uh, so imaginative, Katie, that uh, I can't wait for you to share Good. some lessons with us. Okay. And for many, many people, I would think that, that the thought of having a pizza without carbohydrates is almost impossible. I, I'm going to ask you one question, Katie, to start off with. Uh, in my book, I did a pizza with a cauliflower as a base, mm -hmm. but you're using courgette as a base. What, what's your thinking there? 
I tried cauliflower bases and they work fine, they're easy to put together, I, I understand that. But I always thought the flavour of the cauliflower dominated the flavour of the toppings. Right. And I want to really taste the beautiful salami, the vegetables that we're going to put on top, that even the tomatoes that we're going to use, and the oregano, that is the essence of pizza to me, is the combination of basil, tomatoes and oregano. And I think with cauliflower, it's just over mm, overwhelming. That's a very good point. So I made a subtle cheesy yep. base with some parmesan and using courgette instead. So Fantastic. using parmesan, you got the umami flavor that comes back, and so so you you blending the flavor together. That's exactly what what I was saying, and that's why you you've been absolutely masterful and really totally creating some things that is not just that oh chuck this in, chuck that, chuck berry, you know all the stuff you want to do but is something behind it really makes sense. You yeah. know what something blend? Mm. Sure. You have, a, you have a, you eat something and you say, hold on a minute, there's something serious, there's something that really, it, it also your test pads, your brain, you register those flavors. Yes. And, and by registering those flavors, so you're satisfied because I, I believe that eating is also uh, flavor recording mm -hmm. and the smell. Mm -hmm. It helps to, to sure. for you to be fulfilled. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, in this book and, and the next book that will come out, Katie definitely, 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 she's been absolutely masterful. To be perfectly honest, I don't think, I didn't put too much effort on that, but I don't think I could have. <laughs> no, but no, I really. It's very honest of you. No, but, uh, but it's true. <laughs> you going to break this courgette then? Yeah, be, but because <laughs> I was working in a restaurant, so we divided forces, but yeah. I, I don't think I could really. Uh, uh, think of many things that Katie has. So Before you start, can I just, because what a lot of people do with these programs is they, they get all the ingredients, they press pause, they go and fetch the ingredients from the shop and then play and cook along with you, oh, okay. which we recommend. Can we quickly go through then what exactly they need to make the courgette pizza? Okay. Well, first of all, you need a courgette, yeah. <laughs> only one or two, and <laughs> like don't, a no, no, no eyebrows or anything <laughs> like that. But a medium courgette will do, and yeah. then I pass on to Katie. And then I've got some ground almonds, mm -hmm. eggs, two eggs, 150 grams of ground almonds. I've got some Parmesan cheese here, or it could be grana padana. 25 grams. Yes, yeah, sorry, 25 grams of cheese, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, some salt for flavouring and um, then we've got the toppings. So the toppings are going to be tinned tomatoes, olive oil, um, some oregano, like I said before, a bit of salt, maybe some pepper. And then we're going to make the various little layered toppings on top. We've got spring onions. Mozzarella, obviously. Mozzarella. We've got red pepper, salami. We've got some anchovies over there. Great. So toppings that you like. Okay. But, but the, the topping can be done anything you like. So yeah. I'll start with my, with, uh, with my courgette. I'll just cut the, this one off and the top, and then I'll start grating it while Katie should yeah. mix the rest. So, so I've got my 150 grams of ground almonds here. The other thing you can do with a courgette, if you want to take the skin off so you don't get the green bits, mm -hmm. so it becomes just white. So, so if you've got fussy children <laughs> who don't like to eat courgette, or fussy grown-ups who yeah. also don't like to eat courgette... Now the children are okay, the grown-up is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> if you peel the courgette, then you can't tell that there's courgette in the base. Oh, okay. It just looks white. Yeah. We like to leave this on because I think the more fibre is in the skin and Agreed. it's good for you, and why peel something and waste it if you don't have to. But of course, if you're trying to fool someone into thinking that there's yeah. no courgette in it. Sorry, you said fool someone? <laughs> <laughs> this woman, she's dangerous, man. <laughs> she's I mean, dangerous. The key thing here is that what people don't realise is that a lot of the skins are where all the phytonutrients are because that was the defence mechanism uh, of the vegetable against yeah. the environment. So it's like when you have an onion, it's the outer layers that you really want to get into the cooking uh, for all that goodness. Yeah. So essentially, uh, it's very easy this so because uh, you see Katie she's just mixing all that so I've just got the two eggs and I'm going to mix them with the ground almonds and some salt so so far certainly 100% primer yes yeah it is and one of the things I've been doing on our cookery courses recently is to try and get people to imagine what they're eating so if you take something out of a box and you're eating I don't know say some sort of pie or something rather, sure. then try to visualise what were those ingredients before 
it was made, before it got baked, before it got put into a box? Do you know what you're eating? And sometimes, if you imagine then you're eating a pile of white flour yeah. and you're eating preservatives and you imagine visualizing all these things on a plate where little pools of chemicals that you're eating or, as I say, preser preservatives, E numbers, why would you want to do that? Where, yeah. you know, this way you can imagine what you're eating, you know what you're eating, it would be a pile of almonds before they got ground mm -hmm. and two eggs and a bit of salt and a courgette. Yeah. It's just simple. Can but you it's, see but it's also like Giancarlo said earlier on that, you know, unless it tastes great, then we can't change the way people yeah. uh, eat. But I love the fact that we've got a real top, top, top chef that goes, you know, it, I've got to make it taste great because I've got to serve this to my customers. They've Absolutely got to come back right. to my restaurant yeah. time and time again. So. Uh, this is why this is so exciting. You know, you, you're absolutely right. Every time, and it happened a couple of months ago, we were flying back to the UK. My children were hungry. And what do they bring down the aisle on the aeroplane but a pot noodle? And I had oh, to have this massive yeah. debate with my children about, I'm so sorry, you're going to have to stay hungry then till we get home because really? you're not having something full of chemicals. And you just don't know yeah. normally what you're eating. Whereas here, everything you've put in so far is so healthy. Yes, well, exactly. <clears throat> the other thing is uh, called totally correct. If the food doesn't taste good, it doesn't matter what it is. You're not going to eat it at the end. You, you, you yeah. will not. Um, you will not continue that kind of you food. You might have it once, but you'll never no, do it again. No. And yeah. the other thing that's really uh, we found it with the cookery school and everything. What's really interesting is the fact that we are inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you because I've got a lot of messages back and everything. And that's yeah. what I. How can you be inspirational? The fact is when you really mean it. And yeah, it's not sure. fuzzy dazzy, okay? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I say something, I mean it. When I get annoyed, I get annoyed. I really do. So it's so important that people realize that what you do is, is really something worthwhile doing. Sure. Uh, that's the difference. And what <laughs> worthwhile doing is saving your life. And I, we haven't yet really talked about what happened to yourself. Um, uh, with your diabetes and, and, and yeah, I, I remember reading that at one point you couldn't tie your laces up because your feet were swelling up and just talk well, us through. I was, well, um, essentially I was 17 and a half stone, now I'm 13, 6. It took me, uh, uh, let's say 16 months through three stone and then I level out and then I've been like that for the last six years now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just simply that I didn't know I was diabetic, number one, number two, had all the symptoms, or going to the loo a lot, and I couldn't really do my shoelaces really. And the funny thing is, I couldn't, I couldn't even stand on one leg if I, I couldn't do that. You know, I really couldn't do that. You know, I really, no, no way that I could go and say, oh. And, and then uh, all the other things, when I get up from the, from the chair, I used to go like this and get up, you know, because all the symptoms, and um, also my vision, uh, then my eyes were hurting a lot, and also my brain quite fuzzy, and then was a bit grumpy really, and a bit losing my temper Well, I too heard much. that, because Katie, I remember reading Katie saying you went from this fun-loving as you are yeah. today, outgoing, charismatic, to being very insular and, 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 and unfortunate. sleepy. Unfortunate. He was always asleep on the sofa. You know, he'd either be working hard or coming back and just falling asleep. And, uh, you know, with two young children, we just hardly ever saw him. And um, we didn't really realize how sick he was. And it came on so gradually, like diabetes time mm -hmm. two does. You don't really know and you just think that's your normal. But yeah. actually, it doesn't need to be. Is it truly a silent killer? Mm -hmm. I, I said uh, in many occasions, I would like people to understand that diabetes is uh, you are like the shard on the outside. But actually inside it was like the Grenfell Tower. Right. And if you remember, this is some smokes, white smokes and yeah. dark. And, and that's why you're inside because your, your body is burnt in many places. I wish we could have a camera and we probably we could find where the cancer is and other thing is. Because mm -hmm. I think um, food got me into trouble mm -hmm. and food, f just food got got me out of trouble because I never took any metformin, never, never, n no medicine, ever. So, f so food was part of the problem, but now yeah. food is the solution. It's the solution. Cure, yes. yeah. I mean, seriously, yeah. I, 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 I feel so wide awake in the brain. Unfortunately, I'm old, but the brain is still young. <laughs> you're not old. I keep telling you this. You are older. You are not yeah. old. Okay. You're okay. older. You're not old. Yeah, but I, I'm Italian, so I used to think, 
<laughs> anyway, back to the food. Let's let's right. carry on. This is great. So um, now we should be using a pastry brush to spread the baking parchment with olive oil. But I used to be a painter, and okay. so I looked around for a pastry brush and I thought, what looks like a brush? And I found this spring onion with its roots, all clean and washed. So we're going to use this to spread the olive oil. Daddy, you're not painting the wall, are you? Not doing <laughs> That's how Giancarlo and I met, actually. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he was a, he, well, he is a restaurateur, and he had a restaurant in the city of London, and he commissioned me to paint a mural. Oh, wow. And she painted so well that I That was I the most expensive painting you ever bought. That's what he always says, yes. <laughs> I'll tell you a secret later. <laughs> Okay, so, so you I... just used a spring onion as a brush. I love it. <laughs> next, time I do. Next, uh, next time I come to brush my teeth and I can't find a toothbrush, <laughs> I'm going to go to the onion. kitchen and get the spring onion. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it's a bit dangerous. I told you to be careful. So just like quickly to recap then what is exactly has gone into the base. So we had the courgettes. Yes. Uh, well, yeah, the base of the pizza is uh, courgettes, uh, actually it's almond flour, mm -hmm. eggs, uh, courgettes, uh, also parmesan, yes, and, and salt. And salt. That that is it, it, really. Have you had your half? Yes. So it makes two. So okay. I've divided it roughly in half in the bowl. And uh, now I'm leveling out. And you can go o oval on this, so um, it doesn't have to make a round pizza. It can make yep. a round one if you want, or you it can, can make be a oval, or you can make a square and then mm -hmm. cut it into little squares afterwards. You can make mini ones for parties. Like right. little canapes, little pincette. Uh, yes, that is really is absolutely phenomenal. So you can you can do whatever you like, and also the base. Make sure there's not too thick. Mm -hmm. Thick Thin enough, but pizza. Not, yeah, yeah, sort of. Yeah. But you know, the thing the thing of this is um, what I like about this is when later <laughs> you put all the toppings on it, it's so ridiculously nice, and when you bite through. I mean, so you think, oh, it, you quite think it's a proper pizza, you know? Mm -hmm. And that is, that is quite a revolution. Now, uh, you may be wondering why I, I use, um, that, that's about it. This, this is usually about 12 centimeters, was that, was that 20 centimeters? Uh, yeah, about yeah. 20. 20 centimeters on the amateur would be enough, okay? Mm -hmm. So while I'm doing one shape, Katie's doing another. I'll do a square. And uh, quickly tell us a bit about your cookery school in London, because I'm sure there are many people watching that would love to come and have, you know, ex yeah. they're going to learn from this, this, this lesson right now on how to make a pizza. But if they want to learn more low carb meals, tell us, a, let's have a little shameless plug for your, <laughs> uh, uh, your cooking school. So our cookery school is called La Cucina Caldesi, and it's all on our website, caldesi.com and um, you can come and learn any aspect of Italian cookery and also some low carb courses as well. So we've started teaching them in London, also um, in Gerard's Cross and also at our restaurant in Bray. Oh, fantastic. So you've got three opportunities to come and learn either Italian food or low carb food. I'll also uh, in, in Bray, I do some morning, which uh, I talk about diabetes and low carb. Okay. So far it's been very successful. So we need more people to come. People and there's are a really interested. Number, actually, you look in their website, uh, mm -hmm. uh, www.caldesi.com, and uh, if you look and then you book online, there's a limited number all the time. I don't do masses. Mm -hmm. I only do about uh, 20 places or 24 maximum. So they can have a proper lunch, or obviously low carb, and then we talk about diabetes and uh, uh, ins sort of inspirational talk, which, is, which has gone down very well. Fantastic. How did you first make that link to carbohydrates and diabetes? Because I remember when my dad came back having been diagnosed, nobody even mentioned the word carbohydrates. It no, was they just don't. Eat. Well, Do they, they don't. They don't. Yeah. But also in my case, I was suffering terribly for <laughs> arthritis, psoriasis, also, um, was that, yeah, uh, sir, I, sir, uh, Inflammation of your, infl your, fi your, your fingers and... So uh, when we, st we, we, we tried one day, just as a, because we were well, writing I had IBS, yeah. so I read the book Wheat Belly, which is a great oh, book. great book. Yeah, yeah, and that inspired me to think, well, maybe my IBS is caused through um, wheat, so I'm going to try giving it up. Oh, so yes. Giancarlo, being the open-minded man that he is, said, well, I might feel a bit better, I'll try it too. 
So we both gave up bread. Unbelievable. That was, that was, a, that was a revelation. Well, not just bread, but bread and all um, wheat Sh flour, yeah, sugar, all gluten. Sugar we gave Well, up. sugar we were cutting down on anyway, yeah. but we just, we just decided to give up everything that had gluten in it. That for an Italian chef is... I know. <laughs> that's so that's well, why I call it the, the Mount yeah. Everest of challenges. No, I'm yeah. serious. It's yeah. it really... Yeah. <laughs> and you will not believe within three days, I was feeling totally different. I said, yeah. this is fantastic. And I felt no different at all because I'm not gluten intolerant. Mm. But he... So I said, oh, it's not working, is it? Nothing's happened. He went, well, I don't know. I feel much better. Yeah. And the inflammation on his knuckles went down within three days and he yeah. lost wow. his wedding ring. So um, he no, says, no, no, no kidding. No, no. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, it, it fell off. I tried to get off, from, off. You know, with someone else, but it didn't work. <laughs> so, I don't believe it. <laughs> no, but, uh, but the fact is, you see, when my arthritis, if I would try to do this, no way. If you shake my hand as hard as you possibly can, Strong. I would have been, I would have been in tears. I swear, really? honestly, wow. no. So you see, look, can yeah. you see that the it's strength you've mm. yeah. So it was amazing. So, mm. so when you see those things, it's very important. I always say to people, when you have a disability or some kind, you need to check your bodily function all the time. If by standing like this, that was hurting you before, so I can't do it, mm. suddenly you go like that and it hurts less, that means you're in a way to recover it. Then one day you go like that and it's okay, no problem, nobody's mind. So you need to check yourself. It doesn't matter if it's button eyelid. It doesn't matter if uh, you always move your forefinger and the little finger never moves. Suddenly it twitches. That's a change. Yeah. So pursue that. Because mm -hmm. I posed myself for 50 odd years or 60. Do I think I'm going to be better in three days? But the, the, it's, you see those changes have to be encouraging for you to pursue something that is going to be good for your life after. Mm. Sure. I mean, it's simple. Yeah. Now, coming to the pizza, um, I'm going to put the pizza at the top of the oven and what I've done here, what we do at home, we put the tray upside oh, wow. down. Okay. By putting the tray upside down and get hit at the bottom, hit yeah. at the top and then look, we slide the pizza like this. Can you see how simple it is? Yeah. I'm a genius. You, well look, <laughs> that is brilliant because I've never seen anybody do that before and I'm always struggling trying yeah. to get in and out of the pan. Now we must and so my one is the because... easy way of doing it so I'm just going to stick it on the tray um, She's easy. On the paper, on the oiled paper, with the spring onion. Very important. And I then into that. see it bubbling there. away already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bubbling, yeah. It's bubbling away already. Yeah. So you want fan. a nice hot Fantastic. oven, so that's at 200. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then fan Usually, would be yeah. 180. Yeah. But I need to keep on at the top, because as you can see, that, that will cook faster. Yeah, because it's not fan. So, so yeah. I need to You're, really... And we'll so have you've to got a head start, around. basically. So, yeah. 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 so now, yeah. while well, we got that going... We're and you cook the base first, you don't put yes. anything on the top. No, 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 otherwise... Uh, otherwise it will go soggy, and you don't, right. we don't want a soggy no, bottom. No, no, no. I came in my pizza boat at the Docklands, but <laughs> they, we, we got very soggy, so it sunk, and I yeah. stayed here for 44 <laughs> years. <laughs> so that was my pizza base. Uh, right. So we're going what to make the topping. OK. Um, we actually only need half... Half a tin of tomatoes is plenty for two, but we'll we'll do it with four. Um, sorry, we'll do it as if it's enough for four pizzas. Um, and so you here, use, uh, Italian cans of tomato Italian or? branded yeah. Italian um, plum tomatoes uh, is really important. And if you get the chopped variety, then often they're very watery inside because mm -hmm. you get all the broken tomatoes and all too much juice. Right. So we always buy whole. Um, Italian they don't, they don't break down very well, the chopped tomatoes. And, and then break it down yeah. yourself. And then no, we break it down yeah. ourselves, yeah. yes. Great advice. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm going to put some salt in here. And you want it to taste good, so probably just under a teaspoon of salt in there. And then I'm going to put... And before anybody goes, oh, you can't use salt on cooking, that's what I used to think. You know, for years yeah. I cooked without salt. But when you yeah. start eating primal and you get rid of all that packaged food, yeah. you probably find, if anything, you're having not enough salt in your yes, diet, and yeah. salt is so, so important. Yeah, but <coughs> what, so we have, what we have discovered that... Um, carry on. A, t a heap, thank you, I was about to. <laughs> 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 we'll try not to have a domestic... Be careful while he's got a knife <laughs> in his hand, Katie. So, a heat teaspoon of oregano. This is this essential, essential flavour. If you don't have oregano, it's never going to taste like a pizza. OK, great, thank you. Very important, uh, try the dry one, OK? Yep. The dry is fine. And no, a little bit of olive oil in there as well. So dry or fresh, but no, or always dry better? Italians always use dried oregano. They okay. pick it fresh yeah. and then yeah. they dry it and okay. then you crumble it. 
but most herbs are used fresh in Italian cookery, but oregano is one of the exceptions. Oh, it's just coming a tray along. expanding, it's fine. Yeah, oregano is one of the exceptions that they never use fresh. Oh, that's great. So it's the dried one that's going to taste like pizza. So then I'm going to, you could do this with a fork or a potato masher, but I've got a stick blender, so I'm just going to blend that so okay. it's smooth. But it's not a cooked pizza sauce. The pizzaioli, in the, who are the pizza makers <coughs> of Naples and Rome, etc., they hardly ever use a cooked tomato sauce. It's always raw tomatoes. Because it becomes like a paste. It's like right. a yeah. And if you imagine a pizza oven, it's really hot. It's usually around 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. And so that's what quickly cooks the sauce. So you don't need to pre-cook it. Oh, you yeah, put it on raw and it cooks in the oven. Brilliant. Great. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when, you, when you do this kind of dishes, seriously, you, you, you don't have to complain about other things because, mm -hmm. quite frankly, you see, look, you, we, I'm, I'm preparing all the, all the toppings. You go two types of mozzarella here. Mm -hmm. One is a log one, yep. which is a, it's got less water in it. Yep. And, uh, and this was a proper buffalo mozzarella, as you can see. And what you do, what you should do really, you should uh, cut it in half and leave it on the, on, on the colander so the water goes away. Simply because when you, later when you, when you use the, when you put it on the pizza, it doesn't it doesn't water log the pizza. Yes, very important. So actually. you want to let it just dry yeah, out a absolutely. little bit. Yeah. Look, this is really beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Mm. Will there be any left for the topping? By the time you've, <laughs> no, you've, you've sampled the salami, you've sampled the cheese. But that just backs up what you were saying, Giancarlo, uh, earlier on. That the problem was you were running your restaurants, and you you do you just try a bit of this, try a bit of that. Yeah. And if it you know even without any bad intentions. You know, you, you, you're eating bread all day. Yeah. Just no, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's incredible, honestly. But the, the problem is uh, being, <clears throat> being in a kitchen, working in a kitchen as a, as a chef or whatever you want to call just it. going to switch them around. Is, a, is really a, a, a big problem because uh, if you don't taste the food, then you never know what everything is. So, so you really got a problem because uh, to run a proper restaurant, it is quite difficult. And um, I'm we are very proud to say that our restaurant in Bray it's been voted the top 100 restaurant in, in uh, Great Britain or UK. That's fantastic. And uh, so it was two weeks ago. And, um, and this is, that doesn't come without effort, you know, and you put, have to put a kind of effort of uh, uh, amazing food, taste, quality, it's all the things that really matters. Yeah. And now, obviously, we, we do a lot of low-carb dishes and uh, they seem to be quite popular. What, what we do is give people the choice. So we still make beautiful focaccia, which I really like eating, fresh focaccia, but I only have a little bit every now and again. Mm -hmm. I also still have pasta, but I probably have pasta twice a month, something like that. Um, so we make fresh pasta, we make fresh bread, we serve all the traditional Italian foods, but alongside that we have a low carb menu. Um, and we sell our lovely traditional ragu, but you can have it on steamed buttered cabbage ribbons, um, or you can have it on roasted vegetables, things like that. So that's what Giancarlo will have, um, so that he's is cutting down on the carbohydrate and he's gluten intolerant, so. Yeah, I mean, that must have been a real shock when you yeah. found out you were gluten intolerant. That came after finding out he was di he right. had diabetes type 2. <coughs> so we cut back on sugar. Yeah, and then we did this test and he reacted so well to not having gluten in his diet. Then we went off to see um, a nutritionist, Jenny Phillips, and she ra ran tests with him and it showed that he is highly gluten intolerant. In fact, so talking to Jenny, really. uh, Jenny Phillips, she actually uh, worked with you on the book. Yeah, it's a so brilliant we, book. we met, we we met on through that. We have it on £17 at Primal Living. Uh, and, and what I love about this, you've got sort of your imagine, imagination in, throughout the book, Katie, and some of the recipes are absolutely incredible. And then you've got the twist of the, you know, the Italian master chef. This book is uh, for, for many, many people, and my dad's not yet read it, but dad, please, please, please give it a go. <laughs> it, my dad loves his pasta, loves his pizzas, but dad, if an Italian chef can give up the carbs, so can you too, and uh, I mean you look you look fantastic, mate. I, I, when I saw the photos of you before you start to lose your weight, I mean yeah. you look ten years younger today. Not only yeah. are you nice and slender, but I'm you still look old. 
older, <laughs> uh, <laughs> still older, but you do, you look younger as well and energetic and... Yeah, no, yeah. it's fine. I, I, I'm quite serious actually. If I, you know, here, look, can you see the shape? Yeah. This is a, when I was playing football in 1979 for Romford, that's the shape I had, you know, the, the, that goes in and you feel, obviously, I'm different, but, but it is, honestly, it's, it's, I, I'm absolutely, at that time I was 13 stone, I was five, six, six or six pounds lighter maybe. Mm -hmm. But really, I'm the best shape I've ever been in my entire life. But also, what's interesting is the mental, mentally. Mm. It's not foggy. Yeah. It's not foggy. It really isn't, isn't it's well, so clear. Well, well, people don't realise, and you know, I wrote in the book, that a lot of people are calling Alzheimer's. So I've got, a, I've got a father who's diabetic, I've got a, a mother who's, uh, who's got Alzheimer's. And, mm -hmm. and you just think about what they've been eating their entire life. Mm -hmm. So much so now that many people are saying that actually Alzheimer's is actually diabetes type 3. That's right. You know, yeah. So yes, that, I, that uh, fogginess yeah. can but be related also, also, to... Also, also, diabetes was called sugar diabetes. Yeah. And at the Roman time, because uh, we're very much uh, uh, sort of like Romans things, we do theme Roman themes at the restaurant. At Roman time, actually, when people used to go and do a pee, the other guy said, oh, it's good diabetes because it smells sweet. So and uh, flies were attracted fly. to the wee of a diabetic, yeah, and know. they weren't attracted to the wee of a non-diabetic person, so that's how they discovered some people were yeah. having more sugar in their urine than others. Interesting. So Casey, tell me a bit about the inspiration and the, the I keep using that word, in, in don't think imagination in all of your cooking. It be turned round, sorry, we'll did, just have a little you, argument about you, it. You're, you were an artist uh, before you met, and I guess art trans, transcends from art on canvas to art in the kitchen. Um, but your love, and obviously this book is absolutely brilliant, Was it, did, did your real fascination for food come when you decided to try and help Giancarlo out, or...? No, um, I've always loved food, and I probably should have been a chef, really, but I took, <coughs> <laughs> I took, I took another option, and sorry, I sorry, sorry. trained to be an artist, and I did that for 10 years, and that's when I met Giancarlo, and then I started well, working in... Then. Yes, really, I like started it. working in the kitchens of our restaurants um, in London, and so I'd be yeah. painting during the day, come back home, scrub all the paint off here, go down in the kitchen. I used to be on the, the veg section okay. and worked oh in the kitchen dear. in the evenings. And then eventually I said to Giancarlo, I'm not going to go out painting anymore. I just love the restaurant life. I love the life around food. And so about 20 years ago, I gave up painting and went into working in the restaurants full time, brought up the children. And then we had our program return to Tuscany on television. And I wrote a cookbook to go with that. Oh, the first one was actually about his mother's no, recipes. No, no, the first one was, wasn't nothing to do with anything. The television. Yeah, it, it was, uh, was his was mother's it? recipes. Yeah. yeah, I remember going home to to where we used to live in Baker Street, and within twenty minutes, I wrote down all the all the uh, uh, sort of recipe they used to eat, like wild boa, roast mm. hedgehog, and. <laughs> And we didn't put that in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and then we saw it. That's true, actually. That's and the return to Tuscany, that was a BBC programme, was it? Yes, it was, yes. Yeah. And that was my second book. And now I've just finished our 13th book. 13th book? Yes. So this is number 12. That's is it? number 12. So tell us about number 13 that's um, coming out it's, soon. It's a follow up. It's okay. available uh, to pre order on Amazon. It's called Reverse Your Diabetes Type 2. Okay. And it's to do with weight loss as well. And so it's all very low carb recipes. Not no carb, but low carb. Yeah, and, and this is the key thing is it living primarily, reversing diabetes. You know, we have to have some carbs, especially, as, but, but ideally we want them through yeah. the greens. Yes. You know, we don't, we don't want them um, really I don't through. think people realise that vegetables are carbs. You know, yeah. a courgette is a carbohydrate. This yeah. is a carbohydrate. But it has protein in it as well. I, d I don't think people know all the sort of food groups. And that, and that sometimes it's not clear. You know, a food can belong to two food groups. Sure. But you want to keep your carbs low. Um, and in the book, we've developed something called a carb scale so that we can say that Giancarlo is at one end of the carb scale and we try to keep his carbs under 50 grams a day. Sure. And then uh, a very good friend of ours who is a personal trainer and very fit, Natalia, is at the other end of the carb scale and she can have up to about 130 grams of carbs a day. She's very active, she's young, she's very lean um, and she uh, metabolizes carbs well. Mm -hmm. So we're saying that it's not a one size fits all 
you have to decide where you are on the carb scale and then stick to around that. So that's why I go and have my pasta every now and again. I go to the gym a lot. I like to keep fit. And, um, but we're all different, aren't we? So we're all different. You know, if, I smell, if I sure smell bread, I now. put on a pan. It, it sounds yeah. wildly stupid to say things like that, but I can't have any carbs any longer. Really? I think I've damaged my metabol metabolism so much over the years that oh. if I have a slice really, of bread, I put the weight really. on. Yeah, so well, I think I do different. as well, but I just can't resist it. And, and every now and again, I want something like bread or pasta. I can't quite bear to turn my back on it completely. Mm -hmm. But then I'm not, I'm not a sugar addict, I can, I can afford to do that. And, and you mentioned IBS earlier on, has your yeah. IBS gone now, Katie? Yes, yes wow. it has, yeah. So and, and, much, and I feel so much better. So and what, it's would you not, what would you I've say I've lost was a stone and I've kept a stone off and that was always bothering me, this stone. So I'm much happier now. And if you and had to IBS say one thing up. caused the IBS, any idea what it was for yourself? Or? Um, I never used to have that much sugar, but I think probably the carbohydrate. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm just having so many more vegetables. I, I'm eating so much more fibre, and I think that that's what's really helped right. me. Yeah. So but there's always, always a problem with your gut, isn't it? If you, if yeah. you, if you, everything is interesting because people say what you eat is what you are. They say, but they don't mean it. So that's, mm -hmm. it's, you're, you're wasting your time, you know, you're talking to the wind. <laughs> uh, you, do, you do, but if you think about it, it's true. I totally agree. I agree. You are, you are what you eat. And when you eat meat, you are what you eat, eats. Yes. So right. that's why you need to go organic with meat, because if it's a meat that's being force-fed, yeah. uh, corn, if it's a meat that's had antibiotics, it can't be as healthy. Anyway, I need to shut up because you get to the important stages mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put the tomato sauce on, to, on top of the pizza. There we are. Let me pass it to you. Before? You just nicked it from me. Oh, I'm very sorry. No, don't do that, please. <laughs> oh, God. Don't work with children or your wife, okay? <laughs> I thought it was animals, but there you go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and talking of working with children, uh, one of your sons works with you in the, in the restaurant or, yeah, or is it the cook school? But both of them, really. In, okay. uh, in part time, but uh, Giorgio, which is the oldest one, helps us a little bit more. So he's uh, is always present in the restaurant, which is really. He's a very good boy, actually. So it's really nice. So here I've got. And sorry to interrupt, let me just say something. So we talked earlier on. And the reason I wrote my book was I felt cheated because for many, many years, bringing my children up, I thought I was doing the right thing, mm. giving them orange juice in the morning and healthy cereals, so I thought. Uh, and I felt cheated. I became obese like yourself. Luckily, I avoided the diabetes. Um, but I guess your children now, with your new knowledge, I've got much better start to life than we have because at least they know the truth about food. Yeah. Well, that is true because uh, what's happened is uh, they look leaner, they're much better, much better shape. And we've never food. forced them to go low carb. They've sort of taken it on by osmosis, really. They've just yeah. seen the results with, with Giancarlo, the results with me, that we feel good. Um, and so they've just kind of gone low carb and, and, and are feeling better for it. And they find that at school it's quite difficult because there's yeah. limited choices. Terribly, terribly that so. is the problem mm. when you send them off. And yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I put my tomato on top. Now I've got my mozzarella. Okay. Nobody says the word mozzarella like an Italian. I know. I can't say it like an Italian. Go on, I give it me one more time. No, I, I use my mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, after I've uh, finito con la mozzarella, cosa facciamo? <laughs> Mettiamo le alici. alici. Is this for me? Yes, darling, because mine much. is better than yours. It <laughs> is. That type of mozzarella is less watery, isn't it? Yeah, but so your pizza will be logged pizza. And Neil, oh, now, we Katie, you've sort of divided yours. Like yes, a I thought that was going to be quite nice. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can tell she's an artist. Me, I'm a complete peasant. I just, <laughs> I just want my pizza. I forget about designing, brushing the pizza. You're in a joke. This is a. Anchovies here, because oh, anchovies are so delicious. Anchovies. And this is going to be my pizza. Yours, you can go and buy from um, <laughs> across the road, please. Thank you, you can't buy a good pizza anywhere. Not like this. Ah, ah, ah. Now, the olives, are usually, I cut them in half, because they're much better if you do that. Is to put the whole olive. And uh, could you go green olives as well, or do you just prefer yes. the Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, we just put those because we thought 
Was it a good idea? They also taste nice, and I do think that's important. Mm -hmm. When you get the sort of cheaper black olives that are dyed, yep. and they have the... Dyed? Oh, ooh, ooh. Mm. I didn't know this. They Appar dye black olives Apparently, wow. I'm, yeah. Apparently that some olives are dyed. So, so spend a little bit more, get the real thing. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, my pizza is full of goodies. Uh, I've got my pizza with them. Um, you want some interest, darling? Yes, please, yeah. And there are arguments between the pizza makers that um, some of them put basil on before it goes in the oven, mm -hmm. and other people say, no, it's better to have the basil on afterwards. Before gives the flavour of basil, Yeah. Um, but the basil goes black. And if you put a basil on afterwards, it stays like it vibrant and green. Yeah, and also it smells these lovely. These also give you the flavour all the same. I don't like burns things, so they don't yeah. do that. And um, well, we don't want any. So basically, what really, I've got so. in my pizza, my toppings are very simple. Anchovies one side, as mm -hmm. you can see, I didn't yep. mix it with a with a salami. Mm -hmm. So basically, you've got two two pizza in one. Yeah. The flavor changes. So instead of mixing all together, because this is quite salty, this is quite salty. You mix it together, it doesn't go at all really. Okay. So when you eat it, you eat this half first, and then you eat the other half. Great idea. Uh, it's very important because yeah. otherwise mm -hmm. you get all that. What was this? And then people say, oh, I don't like it. Which is really, it's not, it's not the right idea, really. Yeah, I mean, so you can, can't you, when you're cooking, you can put too many flavours in, yes. competing for the attention of the yeah. taste buds. No, yeah. and it's, and it's, and it's and wrong, it's yeah. wrong. I always, I always believe that a clean flavour, you know, you, you do something, you have a clean flavour, I eat that and I eat that. And then, obviously, if you, if you cook in a different way, that you, you want to put so many flavours, then becomes, totally becomes a... A mishmash of things sure. and it's not really what you want to do. Now here I put this back into my tray which is uh, still in the oven and you can see look uh, see I was sliding it. Yeah. Look I was sliding like this. Now it's, 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 it's head here. There you go. And, and the paper you've used is there anything specific uh, no, no, about that? No no it's a the normal baking paper that you use. And I'm going to put mine back on the tray. I could have just left it on the tray, actually. Yeah, but you're not that But I great didn't think of that. But she's an artist. Yeah, but, but hey, it looks uh, pretty, doesn't it? She knows with that magic camera in the sky shining oh. down that <laughs> God. it needed to be back on the woodwork. And I've lost, God, I've lost my so pen. so smooth. It's amazing, <laughs> really. I tell you what, as you're right, so lovely... So mine's all divided up. Mine's going to go. You in. can taste one slice of salami. And we've, so we've turned... So tell me about the salami, because... OK, let's have a debate, because we're always so nice to each other. I don't ever recommend salami because you never know what goes into it. So what should we be buying if we want to make sure it's a good Buy salami? Buy a whole one like this. OK. And um, this is actually a saucisson sec. It's a French one, not an Italian one. Oops. Oops. Um, Let me taste it. But um, better to buy one from a small producer and, um, and one that comes like this rather than the ones that are pre-sliced and wrapped in loads of plastic, etc. Mm -hmm. I'd prefer to have one like this. That tastes really good. Thank you. Oh. And you should see the, the quantity of fat in it as well that keeps it from drying out in the oven. Okay. Um, nice white fat like this, so it's going to be satiating, it's going to fill you up, you're going to feel the, good. The, the, one of the things that really bothers me, <laughs> people say, oh, that's fatty. If you don't put fat in this, it won't taste nothing. It's just a joke. Yeah. It's not that they're cheating on making the salami, it's just the fact that he needs that to compensate the whole look. Mm. Uh, mm. Sorry, but... Tastes great, looks Yeah, good. but you know what I mean? So yeah. when people are, they, they say to you, I don't have that because it looks too fatty. I think, yeah, the look is not the taste, maybe, <laughs> you know? Think about <laughs> but it. But this is all part of the U-turn, isn't it? You know, I grew up, back to this thing that I feel robbed of my health, because I was told fat was the enemy. And, mm. and you know, uh, and reality is, that's what we've always eaten. Mm. And as long as it's natural, healthy fats and not, mm. you know, chemical enhanced fat, actually, hydrogenated, exactly, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's good for you. Yeah, no, it's good for you. Actually, when I, was, when I was in Italy as a boy, we used to eat a lot of fat. You know? mm. Yeah, really. And in the winter, especially, Katie, uh, because, you know, we used to kill our own pigs, all the fat and it was all stored, problem that we used to use. To cook. We, we never, I was never sick, actually. Yep. I was never sick. Yep. I don't remember being in bed for days and don't, don't remember anything. Because when you were eating whole animals, especially when you were eating 
like the, you know, the, the livers, mm. and you're, you're eating you know, the hearts, and you're eating the whole animal, then yeah. you've got everything you need for life. You've got full mm. nutrition throughout there. And but, I think mm. most illnesses today are a lack of good nutrition. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think um, introduction of sugar and the, and the TV commercial say, a finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. A treat? It was more like to kill your kids is just enough to give yeah. you another finger of fudge. Yeah. They kill them all. Yeah. And it's really, it's a shame actually. Mm. It's a shame. I. Well, it was, I think it was a two generation food experiment that went wrong. And the good thing today, and we're seeing this, you know, in Hong Kong with the protesters, is kids today. They've got a voice, but they're using you know, the, the internet to communicate, but they've got a voice. And I, th I think the tide will turn and with programs like this and you know, the, the, the way you're cooking and make, I think what is really important about you two is, because there's lots of people now saying what I say, which is go low carb and, and so on and so forth. But what you've done is, you know, I think the recipes in my book are pretty good, but these just taste amazing. They look amazing. And therefore, now you don't feel like, I always say to when a smoker wants to stop smoking and they say, I'm giving up, I say, you're not giving up. If you say you're giving up, you'll never give up. You're escaping. Mm. Uh, you're escaping smoking. And it's the same with food. If you think you are giving up carbohydrates, you'll always go back to them, as in the white carbohydrates. Mm. Whereas this is an escape from carbohydrates because it tastes so good. Everything but, but is yeah, and you don't miss the carbs. No, you, then you don't, don't miss it. You don't miss it. Yeah, oh, uh, and uh, I think that's really important that when Giancarlo, because of the gluten intolerance, we kind of inadvertently went low carb. But actually, his celiac disease kind of saved his life in a way mm. um, from the diabetes. So we were so grateful for that. And we never thought we'd be grateful that he was gluten intolerant. Mm -hmm. But actually, we are. Um, but instead of saying, you can't have this pasta, Giancarlo, you can't have this, you can't have that, I just would put something else there. And I remember experimenting with cabbage one day, thinking, I wonder how I can turn this white cabbage into something that looks like beautiful tagliatelle. So I cut it into ribbons and softly just steamed it with a little bit of water and some butter and pepper and salt until it went really soft. So about 10 minutes, didn't want it crunchy because pasta's not crunchy, mm -hmm. I wanted it soft. Uh, and then I drained same, it. Al dente, you know, yeah. soft yeah. al dente. Not, which is not a, mushy, no, 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 no just, no, no, no. you know, al dente, like yeah. pasta. It looked translucent, looked yeah. really brilliant. And I drained it and put it into a pasta bowl. I put some ragu on the top of it, mixed it in a little bit. I put parmesan on top, a little bit of black pepper and a couple of basil leaves. And I said, oh, Giancarlo, try this. And he went, well, I can't eat it, it's pasta. I went, just try it. And he tried it and he thought, it's not pasta, what is this? And then he went, it's cabbage, you're giving me cabbage, and it's lovely, and he loved it. And that's how we yeah, came to again, do the Then again, cabbage. you see, uh, what, what really needs I'll to be bear in mind is the fact that you have to be open-minded yourself. Exactly. You, you need mm. to have embrace things. Yes. Nothing is set in stone, nothing. Our life changes every day. And people should get that, because mm -hmm. it's so important that you have a, an elasticity of thinking. Yeah. You really must. Is yeah. your own yeah. very survival. A lot my of good friend are Glenn, his mom lived to 104, and I said, if you had to say one trait, how did you get to 104? She said, he said, no matter what happened to my mom when my dad died, and I think her ability to embrace change yes. is why she lived so long. Gosh, yeah. And that's, that's your ability to, I think, embrace change yeah. while you're still here today cooking great food for us. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's really massive. It's really, really massive, wow, honestly. Uh, that I looks mean, fabulous. I think it needs a bit longer. I think I want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, not really. It's cooked, but the, the, right. um, there's a bit of water with the, with the mozzarella, but this is... Um, so the things you're saying, keep the mozzarella on the side for yeah. as long as you can yeah, before cooking. Yeah, I should have yeah. put it in a sieve, really. Yeah, we you could have. put this onto the board. And yeah. I noticed board you, you, you've cooked that at yeah. about 220, whereas a pizza oven's at, I think, about 400. 400, Why, why yeah. would you not put that completely Oh, well, I max? could have done. I could or have gone up to max, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So try yeah, and so create really the hot. environment like a big yes. pizza oven. Yes, exactly, yeah. That does look fabulous. Where's the, where's the, Where's the scraper? Well, I've got a, got a scraper. I anyway, one. so 
the point that I'm Ooh. making, is the, the, the point that I'm making is this: is that really um, you, know. you can have a pizza. No, seriously, smell, smell, smell. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, seriously. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really nice. And, uh, and, and both of you cook the same way with the basil afterwards rather than putting it in the oven? I don't like the basil. I like the basil after. It's because yeah. you see, now we're going to cut a piece in a second and then we'll have a, we'll have a little trial. And, and then you see. So now I cut the, pi the pizza in quarters. And is this, uh, I mean, everybody's learned lots from watching the program, I, I hope. But is this something you do at your, your school as well? Yeah, yeah. 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 We, do we do it at home as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, it's true. You know, because uh, remember, you know, when, when you crave for something and uh, if you invented something to begin with, you know, you do what you preached. Yeah. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but, you know, at home we eat the book. Yeah. I wouldn't keep the way I am if I didn't. Mm. Not eating the book, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was Please, looking for the I, mean. I was looking for the bite marks on the yes, cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought, you know, we keep talking about. Is the way you look at me? Said, today. Oh, no, 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 I'm Italian. But the way you look at me, said, really, Italians well, eat books. The, that's why they're very the good. This is full. All books are carbohydrates. That's what they are. That's what they <laughs> yeah. are. Um, it's the ultimate carbohydrate. Um, this book is available at Primal Living, and we've got on, on offer at the moment at seventeen pounds. And I tell you, not only will it help change your life and help you avoid all those carbohydrates, everything in here tastes amazing. It really, really tastes amazing. And, and if you're quite quick, I'm not going to promise you this, uh, but we've had uh, uh, 50 of them signed for you today while they're here. So uh, there's a chance that yours might also have an autograph in there. Wow. Defaced by the chef and the imagination of the Caldeses. Thank you very much. Thank you. They look No, fabulous. no, my pizza is a real pizza. It's a square pizza. Where, 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 where do I go first? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really, excuse me. I mean, do you, do you call that pizza? I don't think Shall I put it on my own board? Oh, no, I won't. Yes, I no, you can, no, you can join forces. Pizza. You can have square pizzas. You can I, have I call those posh pizza. pizzas. Yeah, in Rome they have pizza al taglio by the slice. So mine's a Roman one, and his is one from Naples. See, he's gone straight in. Look, I, I, I know. he's not even giving it the guest. I'm not going to come to your house for a party. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're going to have all of the anchovies and not leave me any, aren't you? I've got some anchovies for you, Steve. Oh, good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, 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 mm. It's very good. hot by the looks of it. Um, it sounds hot. Mm, mm. This is seriously delicious. Oh, wow. I mean, really delicious. When I say delicious, I tell I you mean, what, I, I mean, could feed that. I mean, delicious to friends, and you would not know that that wasn't no. a bread base. That is, and it's also gluten free, bread. so oh. you know, good on that front as well. You should try on with a salami. Oh. This is fabulous. Honestly, my kids would not know that that was not no. made of bread. Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that at home. We've gone <laughs> we a bit go, quiet. We're going to go really quiet here. <laughs> that tastes absolutely fabulous. Good for nutrition, yeah, I mean, full of goodness. The, 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 the courgettes, the, mm -hmm. the almond uh, in there. Everything there, super, super healthy. I'm Full of fibre, <coughs> good fibre. Mm, lots and lots of fibre. Mm. So, oh, if like you want to make this at home, you could rewind, well not tapes anymore, is it? you could go back to the beginning uh, of the programme. Uh, but what I 100% recommend and is the book, because everything here is about, it says at the bottom, a life-changing diet to prevent and reverse type 2 diabetes. And before you, if you're sitting there and you have diabetes already, there is a very strong chance that you can reverse it. If you go to diabetes.co.uk, you will find actually thousands of people that have reversed their diabetes. And it is in the main about cutting down the processed carbohydrates that's going to help you change your life. And, and what I love about Giancarlos is that if, if you could do it, anybody mm. could do it. 
You were a master award-winning chef. You got well, you had some honours, didn't you, in Italy for? Yes, yeah. so I'm, for, a, I'm a cavaliere. So it's the, the equivalent of our MBE yeah. for representing Italian food abroad. That's absolutely yeah. fantastic. And yet, you know, and everything you said you used to eat pasta twice a day, then your eyesight became blurry, then you mm. had problems doing your shoelaces, and you were mm. 17 stone in weight. And look at you now, a fine example. I'm very <laughs> sexy. A fine example of Thank what you. an Italian restaurant <laughs> owner should look like. Katie, I, I need to try yours. Mm. I need to try yours because his was good. Oh, but, uh, now, now there was the biased bit comes along. Yes, no, 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 the no, 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 it's fine, no, okay, you can unbiased. be like that, no, 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 you. <laughs> oh, and, and, by the, and by the way, last time I did a cooking demonstration, Katie was the chef after me, and it was, <laughs> I'm sorry I left the kitchen in such a mess. <laughs> and you nicked my wooden boards as well. Right. Mm. 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 Oh, it's not a compliment. And she said, you know, you weren't very nice. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> to my wife. Mmm, you weren't very nice to my wife. It was very nice to my wife. But we had a lovely pizza, so we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. I'm not going to say which is my favourite, because that would be very unprofessional. They are both wonderful pizzas. Mm. So, I'd like to wrap up by saying, if somebody's overweight, and they haven't yet started to change their life around, uh, maybe they have diabetes already, um, Maybe they don't, but they're overweight. They want to lose weight. What's the first few steps that you think, or what's the first few steps that turn your life around? What recommendations would you have? Something simple, some basic steps. Um, we wrote the book with Dr. David Unwin, and he always says, do one thing first, like give up bread, and then maybe move on to giving up pasta, give up things with flour in, give up um, sugar. So start with one thing and mm -hmm. give it up for a week and then having succeeded there, give up something else. And I would add to that that uh, as well as giving something up, you want to put something back in its place. So I didn't say to Giancarlo, you can't have pasta. I gave him a different kind of pasta. I think one of the things I'm very proud about the book is that we wrote it with David Unwin and with Jenny Phillips and Jen Unwin as well. And um, the science at the front of the book is very clearly explained. And I was really adamant that it should be explained to the everyday person. And if I could understand it, then anyone else can. So I would say get your head around the science and start by giving one thing up and put something much more interesting in its place. That's brilliant. And in fact, we're, we're massive fans of uh, Dr. David and Dr. Jen yeah. Unwin. So uh, the fact that they're involved with this book. Yeah. Thank you for writing. In fact, I've just realised it says it on the front. Um, this is the perfect first step to losing weight. This is your first perfect step if you've got diabetes to potentially even reversing it. And it's certainly a great step to avoiding diabetes. I'm going to make sure, in fact, I'm going to go around and help my dad cook some of these recipes now. I've done lots of them myself. They are absolutely brilliant. Good. Thank you for your time today in the studio. Uh, I know we've got a, a podcast coming up with you as well, so I look forward uh, to doing that. And I believe we've got in another program a dessert recipe. We Absolutely, have. yes, because you have to have dessert. We you do. You have to have a treat. But we need to have a low carb dessert. Yes. Absolutely. And it is. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very, very much. It's been an absolute <laughs> Thank you very pleasure. Much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very, very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you very much. Our environment and the food we eat has changed more over the past 100 years than over the past 1 million and there are more people suffering with preventable illnesses than ever. So much for progress. How would you feel if I told you that most of what we've been conditioned and brought up to believe about food and health is simply wrong? We've all heard, don't skip breakfast, it's the most important meal of the day. Never sunbathe it causes skin cancer. Eat three meals a day, 
and eat little but often, and so many more, and all are wrong. Some of the biggest health misconceptions of modern times. Primal Cure is here to challenge these misconceptions and unveil the truth about weight loss and how to improve our health and ultimately our longevity. Steve Bennett, the author of Primal Cure, details the picture as it unfolded for him on his journey to restoring his own health and well-being after spending his adult life overweight.